from the uh, dropping the bulkhead and the radiator panel off for galvanising. Um, I was going to do a load more stripping down and take it all down in one hit, but it just means more loading and unloading in one go. So I figured what I'd do is get the next bits ready. Uh, quite a while ago, I was chatting to my good friend Greg, um, expressing my keenness to find a cat flap rear door. Um, I just find it easier loading and unloading with one. And I also like the fact you can drop the tailgate down and sit your ass on it, as opposed to trying to wedge it in between the door frames. Anyway, one came off on Facebook, which Greg sent me the link for. So we bought it. Uh, it's a bit knocked about, but it's in better nick than a lot I've seen, and less than... Well, I've paid for the top and the bottom, less than I've seen the bottom pieces being advertised for. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I'll show you the top half in a minute. Anyway, one of the things I have seen is you can drop the bot, drop the flap down like that. It holds it holds up on a couple of chains, but you can also swing it open. So I invested in a set of these fancy hinges off guy that makes them sells them on eBay, and they're pretty well made. Nice little bronze bushes in there. Um, so they fit on in place of the originals, and then there's a, a, a one side to fix, which is this, which has got a captive stainless steel threaded nut and bolt through the ring hinge on the rear cross member. That one, sim again, similar sort of setup, replaces that. And that's held on with the existing. Uh, I can't remember. There's a there's a fancy name for them, but you you poke it through, lift it, and drop it down. That that one stays as original, and then that one just becomes a straightforward strap hinge, which has got a, a removable pin. Comes with all the hardware. Anyway, I was just having a way up to see what's actually involved in getting this thing, so I can make use of it. And uh, you can see it's had some armor. So that's got to come off and either be straightened out or replaced. Um, so I am going to start stripping it down. Just put these back in the box. They came in, I think, two days after ordering them, the, came, the bits came. I was quite impressed. Obviously made, made in stock. Um, this has had <laughs> some considerable paintwork done to it, hasn't it? Um, so yeah, these hinges will become surplus and one of those clamps. But then the top edge, oh, Mr. Gravity. Top edge has got a quite heavy duty galvanized steel rolled over piece. And if you look, it goes all the way over and down the back face. Um, I want to take that off because I want to get the framework underneath because it's uh, it's got some, well, it's got a twist on it for a start because that joint's gone and that one's gone at the top there. So the whole thing's a bit wobbly. So once I've got all the frames off it, drill out these rivets, take off all the hardware and try and release the best I can from it. And then I've got a choice then of whether I send that away and get it regalvanized or not. Um, it shows signs of being spot welded there, so maybe that, I would have thought, I mean that's steel, and it's only single skin, so I'm somewhat intrigued as to what's going on, I'm wondering whether this frame is steel or not, get me magnet out and we'll have a look, anyway I'll swap them over, I'll show you the top off. Just gone over with my magnet, and yeah, so this is a mild, mild steel that's been galvanised, and then the frame is all aluminium. And you're like, but the doors, the frames are steel, and the skins are aluminium. And the top half, the frame's steel, and the skin's aluminium. So we'll have all that aluminium on the bit that needs the strength, and steel on the bit that takes the armour. Marvellous. Well, stripping off its uh, steelwork made it a bit more floppy. So all four bits are sat down on the on the saw horses. Yeah, it wants coming apart and the framework repairing or replacing. Um, 
I mean, I'd be surprised if it was even welded originally, but we'll see. Oh, that's it. It's been re it's reinforced down the side. It's been a few colours though. We've got what we've got green, light blue and dark blue. And a bit of corrosion. I mean it's the aluminium. cracks in it that I can see. A bit of corrosion there. So we'll clean it up and uh, most of the rivets wouldn't drill out, they were just spinning which means they've gone loose. So maybe with a new set of rivets it'll stiffen it up. I'll have a good look at that and see whether that uh, wants any work doing on it. Yeah another thing is that front stay down there. <laughs> This bit, which is spot welded in and riveted by the of it. Right. Yeah, I could probably do the bearing bit to uh, straighten up a little bit. Nick some of the spiders. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be all cracked, but it's not. It'd be nice to get that regalvanised. Right, so look at the uh, the top off. The infamous cap one. It now. <sighs> so somebody had a bit of sign writing skill, that's nicely done. Anyway, uh paint job was rubbish. Um they've got over the rubber and rubber. I've got to work out how to take the glass out. Um so I'd like to take the glass out, clean it all up and respray it all. Uh, it's got a galvanised, or oh, it's actually uh, amorite painted lower lip. The lock on the outside is original. I'll flip it over and you can see the inside. So I haven't seen these, this type of hinge. I've only seen the wide flat bar, so I don't know whether that's an earlier one or a later one. But it's evidently had some welding on it. But they're primed for getting them galvanized. I clean them all up. Check there's no, yeah, it's been welded a couple of times. 
down there. Um, the frame is steel because it's rusted all the way around. Something's been torn off. I don't understand what or why there. And the same there. And let us not mention the gas valve. And uh, earlier, the reason for bringing it in is to spot this corrosion here. So that all wants sorting out. So I'll just do the same with this, strip off all the metal, get a bag of stuff to get galvanising, and then uh, we'll start looking at repairing what's left. Oh, well, that's stripped off all the uh, peripheral stuff bar that latch housing. Uh, in doing so, it's uncovered the state of the bottom rail, which is what I was expecting. Um, so I really, to do the frame properly, I've got to take the skin off. Um, the way to take the skin off is there's a load of solid rivets through here, which I've took the outside drip off and the inside drip off. The next job is to peel that skin, bend it back over here. It really wants a bit of heat on it first, so just to soften it. Um, but the skin won't come away from the frame until all these internal rivets are cleared off. So that's my next job. I don't think going in there rivets, I think they're spot welds. And these two bits were held in with um, a plate with some nuts on. <laughs> and the only way to get to the plate is through that hill. So probably figure out a different way of holding that. Might put some riv nuts in or... Um, Actually tack a plate in or something. I don't know what I figured was by the time I got the skin off, clean it all up, replace this bottom rail and anything else that needs doing, strip it all back to uh, metal and then uh, get the whole bloody thing framework galvanised. That's my, bot That's my selection of bits so far. So I've just worked out, so the frame's steel and the skin's aluminium. And that's aluminium, uh, that's steel as well. I'm just wondering why it's riveted in and it's not um, you know, welded in as part of the frame. Well, unless it's been an addition, but as I say, something's been torn off it there. And it's both sides. I've no idea what that would be. Maybe a support strut, but I don't think they'd do one each side. It's a Land Rover, it's meant to look skew with. I don't know, I shall ask some other users. Answers below. Well, after a bit of wrestling, I've got the skin off now. Um, that's one of Mike from Britannia Restorations. It's one of his tools. Again, thanks to Greg for then obtaining me. I think he got me a pair of them. Uh, and then that's, I think that was recommended by Mike. It's the lead workers' um, pincers. But the trick is you get that end under first and get an edge. And then you work from one end bringing it up sort of a third of the third up then you bring it to sort of 45 then 90 with these and then you basically got it you, you got to try and get it to move in a straight line rather than a, a series of, of kinks anyway let's have the uh, frame off so the frame's not too bad there's a few bits of cracking down here and on that edge there. But I, having pulled the cord, I've got to somehow work out. I, I've never took a window out, so uh, I want to take that pane out. Uh, mainly so I don't break it, but more my luck. be bro broken on the way out, but uh, I'm going to shift that out of the way and have a look at the frame. Interesting that there's no corrosion on the aluminium. Which, you know, apart from this bottom section, that's obviously where the rust has got through the paint on the frame. I'll well, just give it a really quick whiz round with a wire wheel. And most of it's pretty pretty good. Certainly nothing of concern on this top hand. Uh, these are more sort of a stain. So there's tiny little marks. So if we clean that world up, yeah. On the that looks worse than it is when you clean it up, it's only surface rust, so it looks like the top half is good to go. 
uh, but I've lost the bottom of that leg. Hold of this inside um, profile all the way along. And you can see where it's gone either side of the rust there. So, um, interestingly, <coughs> I mean, I'm guessing they put the frame in, open it out, and then finish it. Don't know. But yeah, don't get what these are. They look almost like an after afterthought. Don't know. Anyway, I'm going to tidy up that leg there. Might take them out and make new ones or something. Not the rivets off. But basically, that, that bottom leg needs replacing. <sighs> And I'm not sure who does one. Um, I shall ask around, see what I find out. I don't know whether YRM do a replacement profile. Anyway, we'll see. I've got to believe they were aiming for 35 and a quarter. In which case, that's the length of piece I need. So I'm looking at that profile there, thinking like, I'm bloody sure that's the same as the door profiles. So I went and got a door. <laughs> oh dear. That's all I've got left, that little bit there. But it's, I, I think they're the same profile. So I am gonna get in touch with the people that make the spare bits for them. And see if I can actually buy a length of it. I wonder how long that piece is. Not even got to the doors yet. Just uh, short of thirty four and a quarter, and I've already forgotten what, what the other one was. Thirty-five. <laughs> so I can't buy a bottom rail. Anyway, I might, might have a do me a longer piece. We'll see. I'll we'll strip the lower tailgate off best I can. Um, remove the middle strut. I've got ordered a new one of them, and I've ordered a section of that profile, which looks to me to be exactly the same as the door uh, frames. And YRM do a one point three meter, so I should be able to do do that. Um, in the process of stripping this, there is a row of solid rivets along the bottom edge. But there's also a row of spot welds. Yeah. So I'm trying to establish whether these somebody's put on because they've had some kind of, I don't know, rubber strip over it. There was nothing on it when I got it. And I can't see. The, the they're additional and there's no other rivets noticeable as such I just don't understand why they've put them on I might change them anyway because they're all bloody crap anyway I've tightened them but they're not much cop Ew. my last dilemma so this is the galvanised sheet that sits on the inside skin and it's warped quite a bit so it's bellied front to back. So it's bellied that way <laughs> and also that way. Uh, and I'm trying to work out how the hell I'm going to level it up because it's so thick, it's going to bend the frame to suit it rather than it support the frame. But you can see, see the curve there. And you can see, hopefully, the curve there. I've just, I've just slid it in just to see how it, because I've, I've been straightened up the frame, knocked the dents out. <laughs> it just moves straight back into flopping around on that, so that's my next challenge. Somehow I've got to work out how to basically flip it over. <coughs> and put a controlled amount of force through there while supporting that edge. Hmm. Well, we're replacing the bottom rail. So I bought a series 
door replacement pro frame replacement profile from YRM because um it looked about the same. So first job was to chop off the nasty bit. So what I did was I've lined up top half well I did line it up, it's all shifted now, but top half of the door frame roughly so that it was laid out along that. Then I put the second one so that it was lined up with the bottom of the bit I was chopping out just to give me a datum. That clamped it down, chopped the crappy bit out. Basically to give us something approaching a 45, or, but it's not because it's not square, it's less than 45. Then roughed in and then cut to near as damn it a fit suitable. Again, keeping that position to the top the same so the skin fits. Um, on cutting it, I realised that the ends of these were, were crap, so I've cut a bit more off back. Took the bottom off, the plate across, took that off. And I've ju I'm just in the process of fitting these. The profile's pretty good, but it's not, not an exact match. So... As I say, I'm literally just in the process of uh, taking this angled face back. So I've got a nice tight fit on there to try and TIG weld it round. It lends itself to being done with a MIG. But I ain't got one. Well, I have, but I haven't got all the bits for it. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, I had a call from the gal from the place doing the galvanising saying, you know, it's not ready today. Uh, it should have been, but the had some problems with the bulkhead streaking, so they've stuck it back through the acid tank and uh, it should be ready for Wednesday next week, which is fine because it gives me a chance to get this done. And I've, once I've finished knocking this apart and grinding everything, I've got to have a strip the shed out, clean it out and get it back to being suitable for painting again. In the meantime, I still want to sort out something as a, something to get rid of the water in the compressor line. Um, I'm quite liking the idea of a bigger pressure vessel. Pressure, pressure vessel. Anyway. So, meanwhile, it's peeing it down outside. Joy. I'm going to call that done. Um, so we've put all the pieces in, welded them round. Just cleaned them off around the outside edge. So that the um, skin will fold back over. I've got to drill the hole for that one. And then do the same on this side, but two holes. You can see the difference in the profile. Uh, it's just slightly bigger. Uh, I don't think it'll matter. It's f I've kept the bottom edges all in line, which is where the skin fits, and kept the outside edges lined up. Uh, the weld's pulled a little bit down on this corner, so it's had a bit of a whack to strain it back out, but it's not bad. So uh, a couple of jobs for me to do, so drill the holes and then um, I'm probably going to fit some rivet nuts in there. I'll get the spacings and set them because the bracket that fits on there has got half an inch of adjustment. So I don't see that there's any great advantage in sticking a slotted uh, a captive nuts on a plate. What I'm going to do though is drill some um, drain holes along the bottom, probably three. Um, so that moisture can get out instead of trying to wick into here and I will probably well I mean, oh, I will do I will flood it with uh, cavity wax once it's all painted up that uh, should keep the dreaded rust at bay so next job strip off all the bloody paint and uh, get ready for painting and finish the drilling off so there's rivet holes here to go and those I'm just having to figure out what to do with these so these fit under there, yeah, and you can see that the the toggled. So this face would 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 in theory sit up against the aluminium, but you can tell by the corrosion. It's uh, I think the phosphate no phosphate chromate no, chromate treated. Um, yeah, long and short of it, I don't really want to do that. Um, I need to replace them because of the holes on here and on the skin. Yeah. Uh, so I won't put some on, but I don't want to put these back on because they look nasty. 
and I am wondering whether I, instead of trying to toggle the things, just keep them flat so that there's a, an air gap between the um, that face and the aluminium skin. I can't see that there's any advantage in having them pin tight other than those two rivets, or three rivets along the diagonal, won't be trying to pull the skin in. You didn't know. But then, when this has been in contact with the aluminium, because it's been painted, it's uh, the only bit of corrosion was along the bottom edge. So maybe if I do make them out of steel, and might just tack them on to these, drill them and then tack them on. And then I can paint the whole things all in one. So I've got, to, I've got to clean this off and then give it all a good coat of a uh, primer undercoat and, and probably a gloss where it's in contact because the underside of the skin isn't painted around that area. It just provide a bit of a moisture barrier. I'll waffle on. <sighs> well, that's an hour I'm never going to get back. Uh, stripped the paint off, made up these two new gussets. I'm pretty sure they were only on to support the stay rods, which seem to swing out from a hinge here on the drawing that I've looked at. Uh, I'm just going to tack these in, spot through once the skin's on, for the rivets to go through. And then on the ones that are here where there'll be a bit of a gap, I might find a filler piece of scrap aluminium to put in, brace the gap so it doesn't distort the outside. But yeah, just got to drill the holes and stick the... Uh, Rib nuts in there, but guess what? Is it walk time? Is it? Is it time for a walk? Well, I think we'll call that done for now. So I have put in the lock, what do you call them? Rib nuts, put two M6 there. They catch the brackets which carry the lock across. Tack welded on the uh, fillet brace uh trued it all up cleaned it all down degreased it took most of the, well, as much of the paint off as i can get the rest of it's in little tiny nooks and crannies so i'm now just wondering whether i should send it in for galvanizing since i've done all the bloody hard work to get there it's uh it makes sense won't it so you can see that these are these are recessed the thickness of that plus that perhaps a 80 thou. Um, when the rivets go through, they'll obviously try and pull the skin down. So I might just put a little sacrificial piece, I might even put some plastic in. That'll give me a, a barrier between the two different metals. So yeah, it's a pretty crude frame really. I mean, stood the test of times. I mean, this one's what, 30 year old, I guess, maybe a bit more. Um, looking at these, the hinges, and they're solid. I thought they were two, but they're not the solid. And looking at the way they've been welded, I'm guessing somebody's had a go at them in the garage and made them up. So yeah, I'm going to clean them up. And I think I will take another lot down on Wednesday when I go to get the bulkhead. Take another batch down and get them to uh, galvanise it. My next job is to try and uh, spot weld on the aluminium brace onto that. Um, I don't really want, I mean, they're not, a spot welder would be handy, but I haven't got one. And I don't know how you spot weld aluminium with a TIG unit. So I can plug weld it, but that means drilling holes in the skin that way through. So I'm thinking about it. Anyway, I think we're going off here for a upload so we'll put one together and get it up cheers well i've just been and picked up the uh, two first two big bits that come back from the galvanizers my biggest fear was the galvanizing not sticking second fear it would come back distorted because of the heat what i hadn't considered was that some numpty couldn't even bleed and move it all right